for those of us who have done studies on worship and you know we would understand that worship is actually beyond the song that you're singing song you're singing is just simply a reflection of your life of worship so when a worship leader does not have a life of worship it is practically impossible for that worship leader to actually lead people in worship Many times, worship leaders are the people who determine the general atmosphere in a church service. They are the ones that actually determine, even before the message comes. It means that if the worship leader actually does his homework and truly intercedes before he comes, you know, to minister to God's people, there will be great signs and wonders. There will be supernatural manifestations as you lead people in worship. People who came to church with burdens, those burdens will be lifted off them. Because you're a worship leader who understands the importance of what you're doing. You know, in the opposite, some worship leader comes on stage and leads people. And then instead of somebody who is in congregation to be, you know, worshiping God and, you know, you know, just being lost in worship and all of that, that person begins to lost. That person begins to, you know, think of things that, you know, leads to unrighteousness. Because you stood on stage to lead worship. You don't want to be a worship leader who leads people and after you're done leading, people are worse off than how you came to lead them. There's a story I'm going to tell and I think I recorded the past video on, you know, that story. Please take a listen. There was a time, you know, in the north, I was serving and I, I was called for administration on campus. Uh, this university is in Zamfara State. They put me in a room like with the lodge dust and some because I went, went with one of my friends, you know, and then they lodged us in a, in a particular room. And some group of guys came in. I thought, ah, oh, who are these guys? Because they looked like they were just talking all sorts, saying vulgar words and all of that, you know. And it was really, it was really looking as though, ah, why did you put me in this kind of place? And so I just kept my fingers crossed. Before we left, the guys that came in, drank <laughs> they drank uh was it sheena also they had a bottle of that and then they were drinking and they were laughing and discussing they were already drunk not heavily drunk that they couldn't you know know what to, but they were drunk already but from their body you could smell you could smell the alcohol and i was just silent i was just watching and i and i stayed until it was time for us to go the car came picked us drove to the venue you know, we, they went with us in the car and then, you know, we arrived at the venue. I didn't, I still do not know that the, the, the guys that were drinking were even guest ministers in the program that we went to. It was until they called the first person ministered, Solomon Lange, I think, I can't remember, I think Solomon Lange, and because this was almost 10 years ago or more, you know, this was around 2013, 2014, I can't remember the exact year. You know, and then the ministered, ministered, and then they called one of the guys for praise my god i didn't even know that i was the one because me i was looking down sitting in where they put the guest and then when i lifted up my eye i saw this same guy that was drinking took the mic and said leading praise people were dancing like crazy the energy in the air was so high many people who are in the church and they just ah you know this praise leader is hot this guy they'll be inviting to different churches that's how that's how it is and these things have been normalized many of these people say oh they drink so that they can have the energy to be able to lead god's people in worship but it's an error of our day and as worship leaders we can at first look at these things and then we are repulsed by you know the audacity that these people have to do this kind of things but after a while when you see these things many times you tend to accept them right and you know you begin to find yourself even do some do some of these things after some time and you might be watching me now and this might be the case with you i want you to understand that you might think you are entertaining god's people and you are energizing them but the real thing you are doing is actually destroying them because there are spirits being transferred as you are doing whatever you are doing. Yes, you are still ministering, but you are transferring spirits. Just like we transfer virtues when we minister under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you can transfer evil spirits to your ministration. All of these things that I've said um, in conclusion is just to tell us and to awaken worship leaders who all the while have just thought that these things that we are doing is cruise. It's not cruise. I see videos of worship leaders, you know, just filming themselves doing private fellowship. The other day I was discussing with my wife and I said, <laughs> private fellowship is it should not be for the public eye. A lot of worship leaders 
just have three days fast or one day. it must be in the public eye you know there are a lot of canal things that is at work in our members that if we don't bring them down or subdue them in the place of prayers and intercession and waiting on god if we have wit that lies around right and we're preparing to go lead the people of god that thing will be a stumbling block the importance of intercessors cannot be overemphasized now in a situation whereby you know in a church a worship leader is not prepared the prayer of the intercessor can actually cover up for every flaw that you see that person making that is why even as worship leaders in a church you know somebody who, who is living a double standard who is living a double life you must stand in the dark for them the fact that you are not leading in church or you are not the one at the forefront for this sunday does not mean that you shouldn't stand in the gap for the people that are going to lead because your prayers can be a shield over those people who are vulnerable in the congregation so that the enemy will not have its way in our services and god will be glorified ultimately i hope you were blessed by this you know video I pray that the Lord will just help us to be more sensitive in these times, that we would know that, you know, the enemy is not resting. He wants to make sure that he destroys, you know, the people of God. But we're going to be that generation that will stand in the gap to, to, to thwart all the devices of the enemy, to the praise and to the glory of God. Thank you for watching this video. If you were blessed by what um, you just heard, please leave a subscription. Um, Please subscribe to this channel and um, also share this video with your worship leader friends. Let them come on board. If you have questions, if you have anything that is a burden or any question you'd like me to address, please just leave it in the comments and by the help of the Spirit of God, we will address them here. Looking forward to see your comments and your contribution to the discussion of today. Until next time when I come your way again, my name is Franklin Okeogo. See you then.